Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Peter coming at you through the tubes of the internet. Today, taking a look at the latest release from Touche Amore, an album called Lament. I'm excited to discuss and glad you could join. Fast Facts Lament, released October 9th, 2020 via Epitaph Records, is the fifth studio LP from LA-based hardcore act Touche Amore. The group currently consists of five members, frontman Jeremy Balm, guitarist Clayton Sevens and Nick Steinhardt, drummer Elliot Babin, and bassist Tyler Kirby, who I must say absolutely fucking crushes it on this release. Backstory Touche Amore have been making punishingly heavy hardcore punk for over a decade, ushering in a new breed of melodic screamo alongside contemporaries like La Dispute and Pianos Become the Teeth. The band pairs heavy, tuneful instrumentals with raw, emotional lyricism. Frontman Jeremy Bohm has used the last couple albums to reflect on the heartbreak associated with the sickness and eventual loss of his mother to cancer. And this latest record, Lament, continues his journey through the healing process in the aftermath. The band are joined for the first time by veteran hard rock producer Ross Robinson. And while he's responsible for breaking many of the late 90s corniest new metal acts, he also has some hardcore classics under his belt and does an incredible job of getting an intense, punchy sound out of the band here. Touche Amore bring their trademark ferocity on LP5, but also experiment with some chiller setups. And it leads to another incredible album from a band that can really do no wrong as they drive this niche genre they've carved out forward. Track by track analysis. This release has 11 tracks and clocks in at 36 minutes. The pacing here is pretty much perfect. The band have been steadily increasing their run times by a minute or two each LP, and they've really got a great command of how to structure the record to remain captivating throughout. Balm's vocal delivery can be slightly samey from song to song, but Touche albums are such a group effort that the instrumental elements or lyrical themes can pick up the slack whenever necessary. And the half hour here seems airtight as a result. Track 1, Com Heroin. The record starts with its intensity at the max, as Jeremy sings about a partner who's helped him get through tough times. The instrumentation pulls back at a couple points when Balm reflects on self-defeating characteristics, resisting what's best for him or feeling unstable, but it regains full force whenever he notes the ways that this loved one has been there for him. When I swore I'd seen everything, I saw you. The theme of being jaded comes up a lot throughout this record, and here Balm presents this partner as the antidote to that feeling comparing them to a sunrise chasing the despair away. Touche have a long history of starting their records with killer tracks, and while I don't think this tune quite hits the highs it just exists or flowers in you, it's still a soaring opener that sets an energetic tone to kick things off. Track 2, Lament. This tune seems to find Balm trapped in a loop of insecurities, occasionally making some progress by tuning out worries, but continuously backsliding and ending up at square one. The percussion is driving, but the guitars bring a hazy gloom to hang over the tune, and it works well as a representation of being stuck in a rut. There's not much development here as the cut progresses, but that seems like the point. Balm sings about trying to appreciate the world around him, but often regressing into just feeling nothing. I think the record's still getting warmed up at this point, but even so, a pretty solid cut here. More self-doubts come through on this third track as Jeremy describes putting his foot in his mouth routinely and maybe losing confidence in his ability to communicate sincerely as a result. The verse vocal delivery here has a little more of a sung quality than most tracks with a rise and fall to the way the lines are presented, and I don't think it works all that well. Track 
combine that weaker singing with some simplistic lyricism that I didn't take a whole lot away from, and this is probably my least favorite track on the release. Track 4, Reminders. This tune finds Balm at wit's end, living through an empire in decline and facing down a world at large that's apathetic, if not complacent in this downfall. I love the chorus lines that seem to find Jeremy presenting a brave face. But in practice, it's more like a way of creating a revisionist history in real time, presenting a version of himself that doesn't match up at all with how he's actually feeling. Julian Baker steps in for a feature on this cut, and her presence gives a big gang vocal quality to the chorus, with an upbeat pop-punk sound that stands in stark contrast to the bleak lyrics. This mismatch between theme and presentation continues into the bridge, where twinkly emo leads back Balm and saying the only way he can cope is turning off his feelings and putting on a fake persona. This contradiction between the jet black lyrics and the bright and poppy presentation works great here, and this is one of my favorite tunes on the record. I talk myself! Track 5, Limelight. The instrumental for this tune starts out as one of the album's lightest, with airy guitar notes over soft drum taps and lyrics that present a theme of fragility. There's brittle tree branches that break in the wind and old dogs struggling to navigate a house, until the music picks up for a chorus where a balm conveys just how completely drained this is making him feel. From its laid-back start, this track builds into a really towering finish. Guest vocals here come from Manchester Orchestra's Andy Hall, and his calmer, pretty delivery eventually gets completely overtaken by the gravelly rasp of Balm's screaming. This is Touche's longest song by far. I don't think they've ever had a tune break the four-minute mark, and this one goes on over five. It gives both Andy and Jeremy's vocals time to develop and mesh together into something really special. And it also leaves time for a twangy as hell outro on a lap steel guitar. This is an awesome track. I love the production here where Robinson isn't afraid to let some amp buzz come through to get a full sound out of the instruments. And the theme of taking comfort and vulnerability really gets fleshed out well. Track 6 Exit Row. No like the album goes from its longest song straight into its shortest, with a cut that blasts to max intensity right from the first few notes. Themes here again find Jeremy feeling drained, but now because he's expected to constantly churn out sad content to an insatiable audience. Even when the words don't seem to be coming, the vultures are still circling, and the last couple lines here nail that scavenger quality of picking him clean even in death. It's a quick and heavy tune that mirrors the band's early approach. I think they've always done a great job with this setup, and this cut's no exception. Track 7, Savoring. Here, Baum returns to the idea of a loved one keeping him safe and grounded when triggers from the outside world conspire to knock him off course. The guitars throughout this cut have a really soaring quality with a high lead on top of the mix, and though they occasionally get lost in chaotic blast beats and double pedal drums, their ethereal quality seems to match the way Jeremy's partner is unwaveringly there for him. With all the depressing themes in Touche's catalog, it's nice to hear a more hopeful message, and it makes for a really strong tune here. Track 8, A Broadcast.
we get more super twangy guitar work from Touche here as the band deliver a chill tune about just hanging in there and maybe how that can be its own kind of triumph. On earlier tracks, Balm commented on embracing the twilight, and here he again seems to be looking forward to the day when he won't have to supply his own suffering for an audience's approval. I'm still not a huge fan of Jeremy's strained singing style in these lighter cuts, but the way the distant backing vocals swell up between verses complements his harsh delivery in a cool way. Their angelic rising quality plays off his vocal well, and I think this track interjects some good sonic variety laid on the record. Track 9, I'll Be Your Host. This tune finds Balm heading up the Pain Brigade in the Morning Campaign, as fans look to him as a sort of conduit to process loss in their own lives through. After intimately recounting the passing of his mother on the band's last album, Stage 4, Jeremy's now a leader of these fellow mourners with a shared similar experience. And it's a role he's increasingly reluctant to take on as the song progresses. By the tune's final bridge, the instrumental matches his pensive tone as he conveys... I don't want this role. Between being constantly reminded of his lowest moments and obviously just having this hardship befall him in the first place, it's clear the toll that sharing this sorrow with such a large group has taken on him. It's a sad cut, but well done. I'll be your own my Track 10, Deflector. This penultimate cut was originally released as a single over a year ago, when the band were first testing the waters with producer Ross Robinson. And I'm so glad it finally made it onto a proper album because it's one of my all-time favorite Touche songs. The lyrics here are mostly just a long string of metaphors for feelings of inadequacy, Balm comments on self-defeating tendencies, and further fleshes out his doubts surrounding leading the Pain Brigade mentioned on the previous track. There's been a ton of awesome breakdowns on this record, but the music that kicks in after the bridge here is on another level. Huge shouts out to Tyler Kirby who gives probably my all-time favorite bass performance during the last minute here. The instrumentation on this track is just a master class. I'm usually all about lyricism, and this tune does nail that too, but I think Touche cement their place as the greatest musicians in the hardcore genre with this track. Track 11, A Forecast. Since the last time we spoke, I've learned quite a lot. Touche Amore closed the record with a stripped down and raw piano tone. Room sounds and warm mic crackling create a really intimate feel, and Balm completely abandons his usual coarse vocal affect as he opens up about feeling abandoned by friends in his time of need. Despite the sadness he's endured over the past years, he makes it a point on this track to say he's healed more than suffered by taking a renewed interest in his hobbies and cutting toxic people out of his life. I've lost more family members, not to cancer but the GOP. Balm breaks the fourth wall for the last couple piano back lines, just to be clear that he doesn't have it all figured out yet despite the insights offered throughout the record. I think this is the perfect sentiment to leave off on and the full band jump in for a colossal final instrumental that caps off an incredible album. Verdict. Overall, I love this record. Touche Amore have such a commanding presence on every track they record, and the chemistry between Balm's lyricism and the instrumental supplied by the rest of the crew is locked in for the full runtime. Lament seems like a logical next step in the band's progression after stage 4, with a decent amount of that visceral pain still lingering around, but also a shift towards healing. LP5's another rock solid offering from a band at the absolute top of their game. 
and therefore I'm going to give this album a score of 9.5 out of 10. So that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on the record. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the release, my critique, or the review format in general. Making this is a lot of work, but also fun and definitely worth it if it helps some people wrap their head around the record. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you next time. It's, it's a series of tubes.